Throughout history, there's been a constant among all elite performers, from Spanish conquistadors to modern billionaires and pro athletes, they all have achieved incredible feats that rely on mastering one specific skill that most people don't even know it exists because it is invisible to the naked eye. That skill is getting over your self-doubt. And this video is how I specifically and reliably crush it every time it arises. Mastering this skill allowed me to go from being a broke architect at 27 years old to a private equity real estate director at 29. So I achieved in 30 months a transformation that otherwise takes about 15 years in Spain. And now it has allowed me to build a seven-figure business in a language, English, that is not even mine. This three-step protocol works every time you apply it because I have taught it to hundreds of entrepreneurs, and I hope it is useful for you. If you don't know who I am, I'm Leon Castillo, founder of Self Mastered Peak Performance Institute for Entrepreneurs. We help them scale with peak clarity, focus, discipline, and self belief so they can truly win at the game of business. If this is your jam, remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on any of the juicy stuff that we publish every single week. So this video is about self-doubt, which is that nagging voice in your head that is constantly judging your daily experience. It is very prevalent among those that have not trained their minds, because the mind is something that you can train. And especially when you're attempted to get outside of your comfort zone, that is when you start having all sorts of negative thoughts and bad self-talk that prevents you from moving forward effectively. Self-talk is created in the first seven years of your life, mostly by imitation of our role models, the parents, our role models, the thing that they say, end up becoming our private discourse in our minds. And then we use it to judge our adult experience, right? So self-doubt is something that is always going to be there. And elite performers know this. And what they do is instead of trying to eliminate it, what they do is they turn it into a positive. They can reframe the perception of what self-doubt truly is. And in order to make self-doubt work for you, you gotta do three things. This is what I did, this is what I teach, and it works very well. And it, everything starts by revolting against the status quo, which is averageness, which is mediocrity. Because think about it for a minute. How many times have you been encouraged to be great, to excel, to push outside of the limits of your comfort zone? Most likely not very often because most human institutions propel mediocrity. They're not focused on helping individuals flourish and achieve their ultimate potential, but instead in achieving specific outcomes that have absolutely nothing to do with improving humankind, right? So unless you push yourself, you are not going to be pulled towards anything valuable from anyone. It's an inside job. You absolutely gotta commit to be the best that you can do. And once you commit is when the peak performance game starts. Because getting outside of your comfort zone and pushing towards things you've never done before is inevitably going to attract resistance. And in somewhat of a funny way, the hardest something is for you, the more important it is to your soul's evolution. This is not my quote, it's Stephen Pressfield from the word of art. So if you're truly moving towards a direction that is going to build your skills and actualize your beliefs and change your behavior, the more resistance it will create. The more it helps you actualize your identity, which is your collection of skills, beliefs, and behaviors, the more important it is. So that friction, that resistance, that pain that comes from moving forward is inevitable. And it always going to invite self talk. Now, when you're pushing outside of your comfort zone, the self talk that air originates is productive because it is signaling the path towards the highest growth. So that is a step one. It's understanding that you have so much more potential within you that you're not tapping into that you absolutely can put into action. Step two is to understand how to really put it into action in the most productive way, because there's a zillion different things that you can do with your 
time. But only the most important things are valuable. And how you define that something is important is by setting a vision that is intrinsically motivated. Something that truly lights your heart on fire. There's plenty of research on how much different is intrinsic motivation from extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic is the type of motivation that is based on external markers of success that are generally typically conditioned by society on you. Things like fame, status, money. And intrinsic motivation is the kind of motivation that is based upon our innate desire that comes from within, that is part of our programming. And it typically relies on our strength and maximizes our potential towards one specific destination that we have the ability, and I would add, the responsibility to find, polish, and eventually master. So step two really is to map out a direction for your life that maximizes your potential, that taps into your strength, that helps you wake up every day fully energized, ready to move forward. Because that is when the self-talk starts becoming really productive. Every time you're moving towards something you truly want to do and you're experiencing that friction and you have that nagging voice in your head telling you you're not good enough, you're not going to pull it off, this is not the way to do it. Every time you hear that self-talk, you can therefore reframe it as something positive because you're moving towards the absolute best destination you could ever move towards. That is the key. Self-doubt can mean something or not mean anything depending on the context. If you set the context for that self-talk to occur, you, you know for a fact that that self-talk is signaling the path of highest growth. That is when you can reframe it effectively. And step number three is solve your limits. This is very important. And I'm gonna give you, for example, my own example, but it probably applies to you because I guess that if you're watching this channel, you are interested in becoming an elite performer and build a seven, eight or nine figure business by mastering yourself first, which is the requisite for any type of business growth. As I always say, you're not one funnel away, you're not one key hard away, one sales script away, no. You are one system and one personal mastery, or one transformation away of your goals. You gotta transform yourself first in order to get what you want. Let's assume that you want to build a seven figure business. Well, what I did when I first started, I mapped out everything that I had to do on the business side and everything that I had to learn on the performance side. To me, there's two types of skills, technical skills and performance skills. Technical skills is the things that you do, like marketing, sales, product building, and performance skills is how you do it and why you do it, right? So focus, flow state, strategic management, emotional management, stress management, right? There's a notion of difference between someone who is calm, collected, and in control with building a funnel or conducting a sales call or building product, someone who is frantic, anxious, and doubting himself. They both are doing the same task, but the result is radically different because performance is what affects the final result. So I mapped out the technical skills I had to learn and then the performance skills that I had to learn to build a seven figure business when I first started. So on the technical side, I started thinking, all right, well, I need copywriting in English. We had no idea how to do it. I need media buying. I need to create assets. I need to create product. I need to hire people. I need to manage people. I need to manage communities, all sorts of kind of technical skills that I had to do in order to build that seven figure business. On the performance skill, I thought about, well, you know what? Now I'm focusing at a solid four to six hours. I need to up that to like eight to 10, maybe even 12 on a good day. I need to be able to be way more consistent. I need to dial in my exercise routine because I was somewhat going to the gym, but never really cared about the gym much. And then that's when I started picking up running and eventually run a couple of marathon and tons of half marathons. I realized my mental game in the beginning wasn't good enough because I was able to become collected and in control when things were going my way, but not when things came crashing down. If I had poured thousands of dollars into a marketing campaign that bombed, that would affect my mental state. So I basically I mapped out everything that I had to learn in order to fulfill that vision that I have committed to after I revolted against mediocrity. And that is when I went solving each limit. At each step of the way, I worked on the most urgent thing towards that vision 
And when self-doubt arises, because it always does, I reframe it, right? Let's say that I was working on my copywriting skills and I was thinking, you don't even know how to write in English. Your English speaking skills are not even that good. You've never lived in an English speaking country. Why would you be able to build a seven figure business in an English language? Like all sorts of crazy talk. And every time I heard that voice, I said, thank you. I acknowledge the voice. This is the proof that I need to master this because I have committed to building that vision, which to me is the ultimate peak performance institute for founders. And I need to be able to master myself in order to get there. So every time I doubted myself, I welcome that doubt. And over time, something magical happened. I started not hearing that voice anymore. In fact, I remember that's about three years ago. I had been like two years in business or three years in business. I got two separate clients within two weeks, one of the other came to me and told me, Hey, there's something with your marketing. Can you please tell me what agency are you using? Because it really is very unique, very differentiated and it draw me in automatically. So what is it? Can you share it? In the beginning, I thought they were kidding, but turns out that they both saw like a fresh perspective on marketing. I guess the fresh perspective could only come because I was the one writing it, right? And I came to the marketing world from a total different perspective, total different language, totally different world. Maybe that's what attracted them. But that is the first sign I got that my copywriting skills were improving. And every time I moved along, I will face myself down. And it is always the same process. And every time it arises, I just reframe it as a positive because it truly is. If it was not important, the task that I was committed on doing, I will not have self doubt. If they were within my comfort zone, I will not have self doubt. Self doubt is inevitable. Self doubt, in fact, is welcome because it tells you what is the rate of improvement of progress that you're having in your day today. And this is how I really sold my self doubt, right? This is how, what we teach our clients. We have like 95% of people say that they do not have any self doubt whatsoever after training three months with us because we teach them this process and we go very deep into how to reframe your mind, how to really believe the reframing, how to start acting differently based on the things that you tell yourself. There's all sorts of mentor programming stuff that we do with them that make them better entrepreneurs, elite performers, right? But in essence, that's the gist of it. I cannot go deeper out of respect to our clients, but the gist of it is that every time you move towards a de destination you have committed to achieving that is based on your unique intrinsic motivation and you are purposefully chasing the path of highest growth, what typically also is the path of highest friction, self-doubt is a gift because it tells you that you are on the right path. This is exactly how you do it. And the good thing about self-doubt is that you can notice when you are winning that battle, because when you truly do something that you've never done before, the next time you do it, it is not as hard. So you have positive proof that there's an improvement, that there's a transformation that you really leveled up in that specific micro situation. So this is very exciting. This is how I do it. This is how I teach it. It works every time. So I encourage you to reframe your perception of self doubt, to commit and to revolt against mediocrity and commit to a larger than life goal for yourself that pulls you forward. Elite performers do not have to push themselves toward work. Instead, they are pulled forward towards a destination that really excites them. And finally, chase the path of highest friction because it typically is the path of highest growth and understand self-doubt for what it is, an absolute gift that tells you you are on the right path. If you want our help, you know where to find us, book a call with us below. And if you want to dig deeper into how we work with the mind and how we understand the mind as a tool that you can shape it, we have a video on it that I think is going to be very useful to you. And of course, see you in the next video.